Oh well, good morning on this fine morning in North Wales. Now you'll often hear it said that this sort of bright, harsh lighting is a photographer's worst nightmare and it's not ideal for all sorts of photography, but I particularly like it because it's very stark and bright. We've had all that dull winter weather and this is a complete change for me. But to get the best out of it, you do need to think carefully before you set off and not only use the right camera, but have the right mindset. Now, as I said, being aware of the conditions is part of the battle, probably the biggest part of the battle. I knew it was going to be sunny today, which is why I came out. And I'll be shooting predominantly black and white with film. I've also got the digital infrared with me because it's perfect for digital today and infrared particularly. But I think I'm going to have to get a bit creative with those skies because I think as you can see, they're going to be clear blue all day. So the usual light yellow filter probably won't suffice. Oh, another thing I am being particularly careful about today is not to take too many images. I don't want to stop every couple of minutes and click away. And even if I'm taking images with a little digital camera, I don't want 150 or 500 plus images to edit down on Lightroom later. I'll be very selective. If I don't shoot a roll of film, I'll use the roll on another trip, but I think the main thing is to increase the keeper rate. Now, this tree looks absolutely nothing in colour. There's nothing particularly interesting about it, but uh, I find in infrared and also in black and white with the preview device, it looks quite stark against this beautiful background here. Now, infrared boosts the sky, makes it very dark, obviously, but also if I use a polarizer, this will bring the sky down and boost that. So first one I've taken with a film camera today. Well, as it turns out, the infrared shot was by far the best. I think the main reason is that green grass behind the tree. It sort of sucked the life out of it with the traditional shot, but uh, it glows in infrared and it allows the trunk to stand out in all its magnificent starkness. Now, I think I've mentioned a couple of times in the past there is a danger with shooting digital infrared, and that is getting carried away with yourself. And the reason being, everything starts to look absolutely fantastic on the viewfinder on the LCD because it, it glows, you know, it jumps out at you. And you take hundreds or thousands of shots and you think they're all masterpieces because they look different. But typically when you get back or months, years later, when you start looking at them, you realize you've been suckered. Well, apologies for the GoPro having a bit of a moment there. Yes, as I was saying, over enthusiasm with infrared images, it can lead to a clogging up of your hard disk. So I have to be very careful. I preview, but I rarely press the shutter button. That means I'll come back with a couple of dozen or maybe slightly more images and I'll be able to edit those down very, very quickly. And also they actually give me a good idea as to whether a conventional black and white shot would work. loving these old trees, uh, the fallen tree trunk and the broken down wall with the sheep. It's absolutely made for me. And uh, normally I keep walking and I try to get my circuit done, but I am taking it quite slow today. So I think I'll actually break out the sit mat and uh, sit and have a look at the scene and uh, maybe approach it from a few different angles. Well, oh, excuse me. 
No matter how much I might want to use the conventional film camera with a deep red or a polarizer on, there's no doubt in my mind that the stronger images so far, by far, are coming from the infrared camera. And rather than fight against that, I'm gonna go with it. This particular location here has been quite nice for the past 10 minutes. I've taken a couple of shots, which I think look really good. Um, but having said that, there is an awful lot of detail in this old tree trunk. Now, my lens, my zoom lens I've got on my camera today has a very good macro feature. So I think it probably is worth me just having a little bit of a study around here with a preview device and then possibly break out the film camera, no filters, and just see if I can get some of that, that beautiful gnarly texture. I think it'll sort of complement the infrared quite well. Well, this actually turned out better than I expected. I was struggling to get the right sort of angle and depth of field, but in the end, I think there's an acceptable trade-off there between the flexibility of hand holding and the edges tailing off slightly as it curves around. Now the, oh God, oh, let's just turn you around. Now the biggest problem I've got is my shadow. My shadow is spoiling most of the shots when I'm over this side. So I'm working on this side which means I've got to be a contortionist to get myself into a position where I can shoot the detail here um, without getting my shadow in. Uh, I'd like to stand there, but I can't. Oh, it's not working. Not working. Try this side. Nope, it's not working. And it's not working. Give up and try something else. I suppose I could always try getting further away. You can see my blooming shadow in it. Getting further away and zooming in with this little lens and see what I can get. It's worth a pop, isn't it? It's worth a frame. Here we go. Don't know about the depth of field, but it certainly it's got me out the out the shot. Right. Okay. No masterpiece, but uh, at least I got one. So onward and upward. And again, much like the previous one, I do like the textures in here. Again, acceptable depth of field, very good sharpness as well from the macro on this particular lens. And XP2, fantastic. I don't know if you're anything like me when you go out, but whenever I put the bag down and had a bit of a break, I always do the ritual of a wallet, phone, car key. And that's it, that's all that really matters. I can get home, I've got my phone, and I've not lost my money. Is it just me? can't think of a nicer place to stop for lunch and some magnificent views while I'm eating.
Right, well, nice lunch, a few more pictures. Let's watch me footing. And I am shooting now with the uh, red filter in place on the film camera. It's getting those dramatic skies, very slow shutter speeds, but uh, most things are at a fair distance. F8 should cover it. And hopefully it's gonna pump up those lovely blue skies and make those clouds pop out. Now it is fair to say that this isn't my normal style of photography, these high contrast black and whites. I prefer something a bit more subtle with more mid-tones, but that isn't the conditions we've got today. The weather, I'll just show you. It's, uh, oh, gee, you've seen it. It's bright, it's sunny, it's clear. It doesn't warrant that subtle approach of a yellow filter, I don't think so. I think red is justified. Now, unlike this morning when the skies were actually bland and quite hazy, the sky, sorry, the cloud has built beautifully and uh, it's making it a lot nicer for shooting black and white and the infrared as well, because infrared obviously depends on the time of day, the angle of the sun, etc. And uh, okay, speaking of which, in your eyes. So getting the right conditions for infrared is important. Best if it's shot over your shoulder or at 90 degrees to the subject. Shooting into the sun, not so good, very flat. But the film camera is better suited to other things, more traditional shots. So some of the ones that haven't worked with infrared I've taken with the film camera and vice versa. You know, I think these are some of the nicest rock structures up here. It's just a shame they're an awful long way from the car, but then again, that does keep down the number of people who photograph up here. It leaves them for me. Now, this may well be my favourite image of the day, not just because of the infrared effect, which is very nice, but I actually think it is the best composition. Having been up there before a couple of times, I love these rocks. I love the way they, they stagger down. Anyway, I walked down to another set of uh, rock faces, which were much easier to shoot. Very much a, a sort of vertical straight in front of me. Easy to handhold, easy to work out depth of field. Plenty of nice shade in there, so plenty of texture and no harsh shadows. And these came out very nice. They could almost be a, a partner to the earlier ones, the tree trunks. They look a bit like bark and they would go very well together and sit in a, a set. So maybe more of those in the future too. Okay, end of the video. Let's just talk about the equipment I've carried today. First and foremost, the Canon G15 Infrared. Had it converted 10 years ago. Small sensor, 28 to 140 equivalent lens, I believe. I shoot everything about f4 and it's a 720 nanometer infrared cut filter on there perfect next up the film camera nikon f80 and the film is xp2 super from milford rated at between 250 and 400 depending on the lighting the lens is a 28 to 105 nikkor i've had this for many years very solid reliable lens and the reason is it's a 62 millimeter filter thread today and i didn't have the filters i need in my larger size for my stabilized lens. So, red filter, that's the one with the most contrast. Got a yellow filter and polarizer. Standard polarizer, very useful, pops the skies. Not quite as deep as red, but uh, somewhat in between. And that's all the equipment I've brought with me. However, I do have a color digital camera in the bag with me, which takes the same lens, should the mood take me, but uh, the mood hasn't taken me yet. Well, the sun has largely disappeared now. It's uh, botted out by a, a lovely cloud, so not quite so dramatic. But nevertheless, still got opportunity, so keep my eyes peeled. Well, that's me most of the way back now. A couple of miles to the car. A few more pictures, maybe. What a fantastic day out, though. Love shooting with both cameras. And I hope you've enjoyed the trip. So I'll see you again on the next one. Thanks for watching.